so uh, thank you very much for all of you to come to our humble home. I really appreciate uh, your coming, the media, and uh, especially my brothers and sister from different political parties. I will not waste time to introduce them. They will be able to introduce themselves. But I just want to say thank you very much for, for your support that um, you have run uh, to me when I really need uh, <coughs> people around. Uh, so basically, uh, what happened uh, this morning is that, um, uh, you know, our yard is uh, divided into two parts. There is the main yard and there is a garden side. But the garden is also fenced, except there is no electric fence on the, on the garden. So I have a gardener who usually come early in the morning to come and do the watering. So he came about six. Immediately, he took the horse pipe to go to the garden to start watering. As he was just opening the small gate, entering into the garden, he was grabbed by somebody and, uh, you know, held on the neck, according to his explanation, and they put a cloth uh, on his mouth. Then they tied him. Um, I should have brought the, that wire, which, is, um, which, is, which they, they used to tie him up. Now, when I opened, for me, I went in, but I started, I don't know what happened, but I just went and started looking at the CCTV. So as I was looking there, only to see uh, him being, you know, uh, is carried by these, uh, uh, these two gentlemen who identify themselves as army officers. They came, they came in front, but I saw them on the CCTV. So immediately, mm -hmm. I got alarmed, I came, locked up the houses, the, 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 the doors, and the, because I saw the guns, and the guns, they were those rifles, I, I was very sure they were criminals because I saw that they, they jumped the, the fence from this side, you know. So I, I couldn't think of anything. I just thought, these are thieves. And I went and I armed myself, and I came to the door because I was able to see them from inside on the CCTV expecting that maybe they'll break the door and enter. And at that point, I was ready to fire. But as I was sitting there, I heard them telling the, my gardener to say, knock, uh, at, at, uh, knock. Then the guy answered, how am I going? He answered in, in, Yanj, uh, in Muchibemba. No manala konkoshashan na munka kila. So I realized my gardener is in front. So I went back. At the porch, there is an opening area inside, and I shot in the in the air just to, uh, you know, alert them that look, I'm also armed inside here. The moment I did that, I saw one of the the guy who was like in front of the the the, the, the land cruiser that came in, calling them, and telling them to retreat. That's how they jumped into the vehicle. But as they were jumping into the vehicle, they told my guard very clearly. They said, you should tell him to stop talking about us. But then, it's like he was confused. He didn't know. Then the other guy said, And then the guy said, And they got into the vehicle and left. Uh, the, 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 pretty much, in brief, this is what happened. There were five of them. They were carrying... You know, those are uh, not AK-47, but those assorted rifles, which you usually see uh, with the army officers. I've never seen that kind of rifle with the, the police officers. So in brief, this is what uh, happened. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> I would like to call upon Father Frank Walia of the Socialist Party. <clears throat> I wish to recognize leaders of political parties present in the interest of time they will introduce themselves when their turn comes to make an intervention but my name is uh, Frank Bwaria and I recognize all of you from the media and everyone here present 
we have listened to Mr. Chilufia Tayali explaining what transpired here at his private residence. As a party headed by Comrade Dr. Fred Membe, we want to say to the Zambian people through you, the media, that we are shocked about what has happened here. Mm -hmm. We are very, very shocked. It is not common in Zambia to see this kind of criminality. There are a lot of criminals around that we know. And they are stealing from people's houses, they are killing people, and so on. But when you listen to how our brother, Mr. Uh, Tayari, has explained, we have no doubt. We have no doubt with all the footage, CCTV uh, footage that everyone has seen, it's there on social media, we have no doubt that this kind of audacity on the part of those responsible for this criminal conduct, we have no doubt that these are people who are not scared of state police. These are people who are highly professional. These are people who knew what they wanted to achieve. And they had no fear whatsoever of our established police system and other wings that we have to ensure that law and order prevails. This makes us, this makes us not doubt the fact that these people could be sponsored by some powerful elements, if not the state itself, to perpetrate this kind of notorious criminal behavior. And we want to join all Zambians to condemn what has happened so that this criminal behavior can be nipped in the bud. In the bud. We also want to say and to remind Zambians that we are living at a time where we have a government that is panicking, a government that has become very unpopular, a government <coughs> that is in panic mode. And when somebody is panicking, when a government is panicking, anything can happen. That said, we as a socialist party, and I'm sure all the political parties present here, including those who for good reasons are not here, would agree with us to demand a thorough investigation of what happened here so that Zambians can not only know the truth, but that they can see the culprits brought to book. This country should not be allowed to degenerate to a point where we should start witnessing extrajudicial killings. God forbid. With these few words and intervention, allow me to give a chance to other leaders who are here present. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I would like to call upon President Savoy Imola of the, of the NDC. You have just assassinated my name. <laughs> um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm sure you know today is a holiday, but um, just when this incident happened, I think um, uh, we called each other up. I thank God uh, for President Sean Tembo here for coordinating us uh, to be here. And all of us felt the need to be here. Why did we feel the need to be here on a holiday? We would have done it tomorrow or any other day. We felt the matter at hand was very, very serious. Something that we have never, ever seen before, you know. And every time when you hear some of us saying that the UPND is the worst government that this country has ever had, this is exactly what we mean. The UPND is very, very intolerant. We have never seen a situation whereby cadres or army officials or whatever it was uh, who came here uh, do what um, they came to do here. This is totally, totally unprecedented and something that needs to be nipped in the bud, like uh, the spokesperson for the Socialist Party um, uh, said, uh, uh, Comrade Frank Walia. We can't allow such a thing to happen because, like they say, if it happens to Mr. Tayali today, uh, our president for, uh, for, e for EFF, 
EEP. Sorry, EEP. <laughs> it's going to happen to somebody else uh, tomorrow. Because that's how they start. They'll start with this one, tomorrow it's another person. Tomorrow it's another person. Tomorrow it's another person. So as opposition political party leaders, and just the opposition in the country, we are very, very scared with what, with what has happened to him. It's more like it has happened to us individually. Because the audacity with which things are happening right now under this government is very, very scary. You can't allow such a thing to happen. Because also, like my comrades have said, the CCTV footage is there. So if really the state is not involved, the people that claimed uh, to be here are really not involved, we hope the investigative wings are going to investigate and find out who exactly was behind that. And those people need to be brought to book. Because as Zambia, we are at a level whereby we are free to speak. You know, if President Ayadi says something that you don't like, find ways of addressing that. If I say something that you don't like, find legal ways of doing that. If here, Ambassador Mwamba says what you do, any one of us here, if we say something that you don't like, find something that you don't, uh, uh, find a, a, a legal way of doing it. Like they say, democracy is about noise. And if you're a Democrat, you need to love the noise of democracy. That's what one philosopher said. Yes. Real democracy is about loving the noise of democracy. So with democracy in this country, we are going to make noise whether you like it or not and if you don't like it find legal ways of addressing what it is uh, that anyone of us says just like uh, sometimes also we may not like what you say but how do we address that in a civilized state we address it as, like normal human beings i won't say much there are a lot of com comrades here would like to say um, um, um uh, they are part of course but as i uh, go back to my seat i just like to say one thing uh, the upnd government mm -hmm. should be serious and love the noise of democracy. This is an indictment on the law enforcement agencies and the president himself. Because the president receives intelligence information on a daily basis. So even as of now, I'm sure he has been briefed. Who came here? So if the president is serious with democracy and being tolerant of other opposition political party leaders, then he should put his foot down and ensure that what happens here, first of all, we know who really came here, and then that it, that it should not repeat itself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, President Savoy Imboela. I would like to call upon President Kasonde Mwenda of the EFF. Thank you. I would want to appreciate uh, the presence of the media and uh, the fellow leaders from political parties that have made an appearance here. We know in moments like this one, it might not concern some people and they might find it light. But when you look deeper in a moment like this one, to some of us it goes deeper because we are all just people. We are all just human beings who love this country and coming forth to give a service with the hope that the little gifting God has given us can take our country somewhere. We do not go into politics because of so many other reasons. There could be people with such reasons, but there are also people, the people that I see here, are people that have gone into these things. Because we believe in every generation there are people that should stand up and offer leadership. That's all we want. But should that be equivalent to a death sentence? Should it mean that when we step up and offer leadership, we cease not to be human beings? Don't we have families? Should we be followed and threatened like we get paid for what we are doing? No. We chose Zambia to be a democracy. And I would want to extend these words to President Haka Inde Echilema. He is one person who gives a testimony of what he went through. And I pray and beseech him that if he be a president that he claims to be, may he look into this matter. Should he make us become so hard-hearted by the time we become leaders? Should we have lost people that we love? Should we come so close to death before we become leaders such that we become so hard-hearted such that even when people are crying, we can't feel their pain because we have gone through it. I think leadership should not be like that. That is primitive. That's archaic. I can confess honestly with confidence that President Hakan Dechilema so far has not showed the statesmanship that he should with the background he has. Most of us have been in cells before. We have been locked up. He has never, not even once, offered 
police guidance to anyone wanting to protest. He's never given. He's not given anyone. No one, no political leader, the only people on record he has given uh, protection, whatever he calls it, permit, which is even illegal before the law, there's no such thing as a permit, are those people that were demonstrating for gay rights. All of us, he has not given, he has not stood up to credentials. I would not want to tarnish everything he has done. He has done some few, few good things here and there. But all in all, this is a democracy and we are standing up. What we saw happen here, I came when I was called immediately because I knew it has happened to my comrade uh, Chirufia here. Tomorrow it will happen to me. I don't own guns. I could have a small gun, but I don't own guns. I could not, I've got little kids at home. Should they live in fear just because we are pursuing this? So what we are doing is a noble cause to advance the interest of Zambia, to make Zambia great. President Akane Chilema will not be there forever. If the playing field for politics becomes so animated, such that people that are of noble cause start fearing to endeavor in this, then it's just allowing criminals to replace us because we don't want to die. We want to save. We want to be part of the progress of this country. We want to see success in our lifetime, but it should not be equivalent to a death sentence. So we send a message that what has happened here is within the ambit of the government. They can investigate. Them failing to investigate this is actually a confirmation of their mediocrity because something like this can happen in a land where you're a leader and you failed to come to terms of who did what. Then you don't deserve to be a president. So if he doesn't get to the detail of what happened here, then he doesn't deserve. And according to his words, then he should be gotten rid. He should be voted out in 2026. So we want to echo the way say, what has happened here, we don't want it to exceed beyond here, and we need answers. Without wasting much time, I want to appreciate the media and everybody, and we pray that this shall really stand up to be witness to us. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to call upon Patriotic Front Presidential Aspirant Ambassador Emmanuel Mwamba. Colleagues that are here, I was caught by my our Vice President Honorable given the winner that I could represent the party here. Uh, Honorable Sean Tembo, colleagues, thanks for coordinating this Solidarity Joint Press Conference. For us, we've been crying to the Zambians. We've been under attack from day one. You must have seen the lawlessness that characterized the so-called corruption investigations the law enforcement agencies without warrants stormed the homes of most leaders of the patriotic front even when the law prescribes how they can do an investigations they traumatized children they they buggled into homes broke doors broke gates and um i think there was euphoria it was after elections and the pf had just lost elections and no matter how much we raise this issue, I think people didn't pay attention because they didn't think that President Nakainde Ichilema's government would descend into lawlessness that early. Now it has become apparent. There is a key matter which is now being discussed everywhere. The case of Kwacha and Kabushi by-elections. Where with the coordination of State House, ECZ, and the courts of law, including then the police, store the two seats without shame. You have seen the judgment from the Constitutional Court. That has ruled that, has ruled that um, uh, the two candidates were eligible. Uh, I'm, I'm bothering to go back to the background to understand, you have to understand why purported officers of the law were here you have to lay the background to demonstrate that the lawlessness has been from day one. Ignore the rhetoric. The president was on hand when he swore in uh, 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 Kajowa. And he said he didn't want lawlessness in, in bus stops, markets, and in uh, by-elections. But you know that the violence has even been escalated. Look at the last by-elections. Our dear brother, comrade... Uh, uh, Dr. Fred Membe was forced to draw a weapon in Serenje because the hordes of cutters were attacking in the presence of the police. And who did they arrest? They didn't arrest the cutters that perpetrated the violence. They instead arrested Comrade Fred Membe. You saw how the UPND cutters uh, attacked our camps in Chilila Womboy and even injured our people, including the former Minister of National Planning, Honorable Alexander. 
Then there is these attacks that are led by the president, who attacks His Excellency the President himself, attacks citizens. He will hold a press conference, attack Nakachinda. What are you saying to law enforcement agencies? Of late, it is even bad. The attacks are now directed at the former president, President Ed Galungu. When the president was opening a, a, a meeting at Mulungushi to resolve the issues around CDF, he went for President Lungu, who was not the agenda or part of the meeting. He said, what does he mean? I will not allow him to. And when the president says, I will not allow you to, what does that mean? He has since repeated these threats against the <coughs> former president. If you see any attack on former president Lung, what will you conclude? Because the president has vowed that he will never allow uh, president Lungu anywhere near politics, as if that he is the constitution himself. President Lungu has put it very clear he's in retirement, he's waiting to hand over power to whoever the party will elect. But that still doesn't uh, settle President Akainde Ichilema. So the unwarranted attacks against the former president uh, are totally unjustified. So when you see the narration that has been done by Comrade Chilufia Tayali here, this is totally criminal. There should be a proper formal investigation against these attacks. And they need to understand that we are part of democracy. They just hosted the democracy summit. What does it mean? You have to allow freedom of the press. You have to allow the opposition and divergent views to reign. If any of us break the law, take us to the police. Take us to a court of law. But you can't send criminals. Because I don't think soldiers would do that. Zambian soldiers are known to be very disciplined. So whoever, if they are among security officers from the Zambia army, is involved in this crime, they should be flushed out. And my brother, you have to remember, there were kids who made a video in Chiengi in Wapula. And uh, people need to remember the pattern. Who went to arrest those kids and beat them up? If those soldiers been uh, arrested, if those soldiers been brought to court for assault, when do soldiers get involved in civil matters? So people might forget that soldiers went and picked these kids who they, they thought had insulted the president. But the law was there. And what has happened to those soldiers? I've never seen any court charges against them. So what happened this morning? Like, you know, this is Labor Day. An attack to one is an attack to all. We have to stand in solidarity. What has happened to Chilfia Tayari and what has consistently been happening to the Patriotic Front from day one? You know, Zambians need to wake up. Because when it was happening to the PF, whatever, well, never PF. Maybe my PF now So, you know, they are, let them take their own bitter medicine. But human rights violations remain that. Human rights violations. So, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. I would like to call upon President for the Patriots for Economic Progress, President John Tembo. Good afternoon, countrymen and women. Afternoon. Good Good afternoon. afternoon. <laughs> what happened uh, this morning is something that uh, is very worrisome from whichever angle you look at it. And from our standpoint, if it wasn't for the CCTV footage which President Tayari uh, posted on his page, we might not have believed what he was saying, but we saw it. It was very, very clear. The people came, they forced the gate open, others were coming from behind, and it can be seen from the CCTV footage that that was a coordinated attack. Now, there are a few salient issues about this particular attack. Number one is the issue that it happened at home. Ever since we joined politics, we've had all sorts of political violence, all sorts of attacks take place, but this is the first attack that I can think of where a political leader was followed at home. So 
It is unprecedented, so to speak. It was a homo invasion. And that is one of the reasons why, for me, I had to abandon whatever it is I was doing to be part of this press conference. Because such conduct, if we don't address it from the very beginning, it will become normal. It will become normal to go to President Kasonde's house and attack him and his family. It will become normal to go to President Sawoi's house and attack her and her family. That's why we saw it necessary to come here this afternoon. The other aspect about this particular attack, as evidenced from these pictures, these steel pictures which were taken from the CCTV footage, is that when you look at the vehicle that was used, which is a brand new Toyota Land Cruiser double cab, this is a very expensive vehicle. If you look at it, it's a very expensive vehicle. This vehicle at Toyota Zambia will cost not less than $100,000. So when you convert that, that is close to 2 million kwacha. So the question then arises, what kind of thief comes to a home like Chirufetayari's home here in a 2 million kwacha vehicle to steal what to steal this table or to steal this chair what kind of thief so from the vehicle itself you can tell that these people are unlikely to be common criminals number two when you look at uh, the person who is uh, behind there who climbed behind the, the land cruiser and the firearm that this person is carrying. This firearm is not a very common firearm. This firearm is a submachine gun, a six hour MPX submachine gun. These types of firearms are not common here in Zambia. And all the people who came, all five of them, were carrying the same submachine guns. Now, for those of us who pay attention to different types of firearms, for those of us who are familiar with firearms, there is only one wing that we know of in Zambia which carries that particular type of firearm. It is not the Zambia police, because the Zambia police generally carry AK-47s. It is not the Zambia National Service. It is not the regular Zambia Army, no. All of them carry conventional AK-47s. The only wing, if you pay attention during state events and uh, such events, the only wing which carries this type of firearm in Zambia are the Zambia Special Forces, commonly known as commandos. Pay attention. When you see those uh, soldiers with the maroon barrettes, and you pay attention to the firearms that they carry, they carry these submachine guns. We are not, personally, I'm not saying that I'm 100% sure that the people in the photo are uh, special forces, Zambia Army special forces. I'm not saying that because the photo is not very clear. But what I'm saying is that it looks likely it looks very likely that the people in the photo are Zambia Army commandos. That is what I'm saying. Number three, when you view the CCTV footage, which uh, President Tayari posted on his, uh, on his uh, page, most of the footage doesn't have sound. But the one which I looked at direct from the DVR has sound. And one thing that you are going to observe on the CCTV footage is that while President Tayari was firing shots in rapid succession in the air, these people were not afraid. They were not running. They were strolling to their vehicles, undisturbed. 
And I can assure you, countrymen and women, as a former police officer, that an average criminal, when they hear the sound of a gunshot, even if they are also carrying a firearm, they will run like no man's business. They will, they will run. They will scamper. They will scamper. Just one gunshot. President Tayari fired more than three, ten. Three. I, I did three. 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 Yes, three gunshots. And those people were just walking leisurely to their vehicle. That alone speaks volumes in terms of who the possible people behind this attack are. Number four. Number four. When you look at uh, when you look at uh, these people and uh, the way they opened the gate on the CCTV, you can tell that they are professional. Yes. Yes. They are very professional. Not every common criminal can open a locked gate within less than a minute. It's yes. open and it's out. So all those factors speak to who the potential attackers are. That having been said... They are covered in masks. Yes. That having been said, I think there is a high possibility that the people who attacked President Chirufia Tayari this morning are people from the defense wings. Are people, it is very possible that the people who attacked President Tayari are people from the Zambia army. It is very possible that the people who attacked President Tayari are people from the special forces. It is, the probability is very high. Very, very high. A fifth issue, salient issue, which you would like to pay attention to, is the fact that this particular video, CCTV footage, by President Tayari, was posted early in the morning, as early as around eight hours. Yes. And there has been no police reaction up to this time. What is the time now? Who has the watch? Mm, from 8 hours to 17.40, no police reaction. And yet, you can see that there are five armed people. And I can assure you that in terms of the Zambia police, ordinarily, when they are operating ordinarily, not under instructions, political instructions, but when they are operating ordinarily, any cases involving firearms, the response is very, very, very fast. They will delay on other types of cases, but when you report or when they see an incident uh, trending on social media where firearms are used, you see the flying squad land here within minutes to find out, to investigate the matter, to get that CCTV footage so they can identify the criminals, whether they are known criminals who have done robberies at shopping malls or this and that. They will be very active. So the question which you, the Zambian people, must be asking yourselves is why are the police quiet on this matter? Why are the police quiet on this matter? It speaks volumes. To me, it is indicative of the fact that the police have been instructed that this is a state matter and they should not intervene. That's what it appears to me. That is what it appears to me. That having been said, I want to take this opportunity to appeal to my fellow opposition, most of whom are here, that we need to always remain united as opposition. We always need to remain united. For us to remain united, we don't need to agree with one another, no. It is not possible for us to agree with one another 100%. That is why each one of us has a political party. Because we don't agree with one another 100%. We have individual political parties. But when issues of common interest arise, we should not check the name of the person involved and say, ah, it is Savoy. Ah, Savoy, I disagreed with her that day. Ah, it is the Chirufia Tayari. 
I didn't like what Shufetari said in his evening video the other day. Ah, it is President Sean Tembo. I didn't like uh, President Sean Tembo calling uh, Mambara and Fuit. <laughs> it should never be like that. It should never be like that. When issues of common interest arise, we should all unite. We should put our political differences aside and make sure we are there for one another. Otherwise, these people will finish us. One by one. They will finish us. That having been said, I want to also take the opportunity to thank you, the media. I will hand over to the uh, director of ceremonies. Thank you. Thank you so much, leaders of the opposition. At this point, we'll be taking questions from members of the press or anybody available in this meeting. Thank you. No questions, eh? Just maybe one question um, to you, Mr. Tani. I just want to find out if uh, this matter has been reported. To Sorry? You. If you've reported this matter to the police. If I've reported this yes, matter. Because the cause. Of yes. Of uh, uh, frankly speaking, uh, maybe I'll shout. Okay. Yeah. So the question is have I reported this matter? As you know, this has been quite uh, uh, traumatizing and scary for me. I have just been in the house. I've not even been able to come out. Even those journalists who came for, you know, uh, my, my brother uh, Frank, when they came, I was scared to go out. So I was waiting for my brothers to escort me to go to the police because I have been scared. So I've not, I haven't gone, but we are going soon after this press conference. Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? And I just want to emphasize uh, from the points that Sean Tembo um, brought out. You see, these people, when they came, all of them, they were masked. They were all masked. They were looking like ninjas. You could only see the eyes. All of them. All of them. Now, I'm, and um, if really these people were whatever... If they were common criminals, they wouldn't have they wouldn't have been that casual during the day and must up, you know. From my point of view, I want to say, I don't want to to sound in, um, uh, inflammatory, but I feel this was an attempt on my life. I strongly believe this was an attempt on my life because if they had gotten me and bundled me in, in their car, and I believe. Those were military. Do you think they would have taken me, beaten me up, and left me to tell the story? I don't think so. Whoever those people, if they had accessed me and taken me wherever they would have taken me, I don't think they would have left me alive to tell the story. I don't think so. So from my point of view, I strongly believe how everything happened. I think those people were attempting on my life. And it's really sad under the leadership of President Akainde Hichilema. It's really sad. And in responding to the question that you have raised, which is very important, uh, we have a duty to report such matters when they happen. But there is also an appreciation of who we are. We have put ourselves up there. There are moments we don't even need to report by virtue of us crying because we speak for people. Let me give an example. If today I utter defamatory remarks which are injurious or criminal trust me they will look for me they'll find me then why should it be that when i'm under attack then i have to go and report but if i wrong they will look for me so we feel the state by law has got a duty to look after him it has got a duty to look after the citizens so the very essence that the state has not made effort to protect the citizens whom they have not only called ordinary citizens, but whom they have thrust responsibility to be spokesperson for the people like us politically. We are not common people. We sacrifice for this country and there is law enough to protect us. So the state doesn't need to be begged to come and protect us. When we are attacked, the state should stand up and defend us. So if they will give them excuse to say no because Mr. Tahari has not reported, then they are failing in their duty. A person who is aggrieved, beaten by the road, may not have the energy to go and report. 
but the state should look at such people as their property and move in whenever they are fit. Just to put it on record also, I actually called uh, the, the 911. During the time when they were here, I called 911. I couldn't go through. I called another police officer who I know, I have his number. I called him and um, uh, I mean, I was, I was talking to him, the phone cut. So at least I made an attempt to reach out to the police, to cry to the police. And even during the day, I've been crying to the police. But they haven't come, and yet the only people that have come are my brothers from the political uh, you know, arena, as well as uh, yourselves. But no, co no phone call from the police, nothing. So tell the media that they can follow us to Wengoloma Police. Yeah.